hey, 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 hey. Hola. Hey, my friends, it's Jawara here. Yes, you guys out there in Cyberland as you're joining me for another math video. Thank you for joining me. And let's get started. First, yo, dude, what are you doing out in the rain? Don't you know you could get sick? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm sorry. I see you have an umbrella. Actually, that looks like a lot of fun. Let's go out in the rain. Woo! Well, we in California, yeah, we're not getting a lot of rain these days. Anywho, welcome. We're at lesson 3.8, and our topic today is adding decimals. Yes. And it says that our central question is how can place value help you add decimals? Now, in previous lessons, we have done some decimal addition, kind of using models, those base 10 blocks. Now it looks like we're going to be moving towards more of a kind of algorithmic kind of a, uh, process. It's time to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. Real world. Real world, baby. We're talking. Yes. It says Henry recorded the amount of rain that fell during two hours. In the first hour, Henry measured two and 3,500 centimeters of rain in the second hour, he measured one and eighty-two hundredths centimeters of rain. Makes me kind of ask here, how did he measure it? Like this problem here, saying that he measured it, but to which decimal place is Henry measuring it? And you know, we can see that the digits go to the hundredths place, so it's going to be in the hundredths. That's right, hundredths of a centimeter. Think about what we can do here. Let's look at the next part. It says, Henry estimated that about four centimeters of rain fell in two hours. What is the total amount of rain that fell? How can you use this estimate to decide if your answer is reasonable? So assuming that Henry made a pretty good estimate, let's take a look. Here it says we're going to add two and 35 hundreds plus one and 82 hundreds because we have a certain amount of rain that fell in one hour and then so much rain fell in the second hour. Now it says add the hundreds first. Okay, we have five hundreds plus two hundreds, that's going to equal seven hundreds. Cool, so far so good. Then it says then to add the tenths and ones, regroup as necessary. We have three tenths plus eight tenths. Well, looking at the tenths, I see the three and the eight tenths, that's going to equal 11 tenths. Ooh, but that's a problem, right? We need to regroup. We need to regroup because we have more than nine, okay? And we have to regroup every time we get a group of 10. It is our base 10 system in math. So let's look at this. We have two ones from the two and 35 hundredths, and we have that one one up there with from the one and 82 hundredths. We're also gonna have a regrouped one because this is going to then be, it's like 10 plus one. We have 10 tenths plus one more tenth. That 10 tenths we're going to make in one regrouped one. And so that gives us four ones. And we still have that one tenth there. Record the sum for each place value. So 5 plus 2 was 7. This here is 11. Remember the decimal? Bring it on down, down. That's right. We need to bring that down. Yes. And then I'm going to carry my one, that one group that we created that new hole. And now we have 4. Okay. And then that makes sense because it's 1 tenth left over, meaning that we have 4 and 17 hundredths. Now, it's just draw a quick picture to check your work. Okay, so we are doing more modeling. Modeling with mathematics makes me think of a mathematical practice. Wow, you're so big. Okay, model with mathematics. Yes, mathematical practice four talks about how you can recognize in math in everyday life and use math, I know, to solve everyday problems. Yeah, I can make assumptions and estimate. That's what Henry did. He estimated to make complex problems easier. Because we did check our work. Well, we didn't check it with the estimate. But yeah, 4 and 17 hundreds, that was extremely close to 4. So our answer was reasonable. Anyway, concrete models, and that's what we're going to do today. Okay, now, on the count of three, you're going to disappear. One, two, three. See, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. All right, bring it on down here. We're going to draw a quick picture to check your work. You guessed it. Infinite cloner time. Yeah. Okay. So first we're going to model that first quantity. So here's my two. Here's my three tenths and my five hundredths. Now I've modeled the two and thirty five hundredths. Now I just need to model the one and eighty two hundredths. Then I've showed the one and eighty two hundredths in blue. 
on blue. Do, do, you know what? Yes, and blue because so that way make sure that you can see how we're bringing these together. Now we first added our hundreds and you can see that yeah two and five gives us seven so we're good we don't have to do any kind of regrouping with these guys over here okay you guys can be buddies hang out there you go that's right doesn't matter your different color that's cool now that gives me the seven now i come over here and you see i have the eight but i have the three so now i need to regroup so i'm gonna take these eight and join them with those two there we go that makes a ten so it's like I can cross these out, which makes my 10, and add on one more hole. And there you go. I made him green, since he's the green guy that came in there and made the new hole. How cool. Yes. And then that pretty much ends it. There's nothing more I can do. I can show the arrow. I'm sure you can see what happened here. Right. We brought these guys. And now, so how many centimeters of rain fell? Well, we know that's four and 17 hundredths. So since 4 and 17 hundredths is close to that estimate 4 that Henry made, the answer is reasonable. Yes. And again, mathematical practices, as we look over here, it says explain how you know when you need to regroup in a decimal addition problem. Well, I know that, that we need to, to regroup whenever we have 9 hundredths or more, or 10, I'm sorry, 9 hundredths or, or, or more, um, or 9 tenths or more, whenever we get that group of 10, we need to regroup, regardless of the decimal place that it falls in. Yeah, I like it. My goodness, this is so easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah. Okay, page master. Yes, thank you, sir. Equivalent to decimals. Okay, I think I used this in an earlier video. When adding decimals, you can use equivalent decimals to help keep the numbers aligned in each place. Add zeros to the right of the last digit as needed so that the add-ins have the same number of decimal places. Let's look at this. Let's just try this. Let's estimate and then find the sum is what it's asking us to do. Step one says estimate estimate the sum. So we have 20 and 4 tenths plus 13 and 76 hundredths. So if we estimate 20 and 4 tenths is about 20 and we're adding that to looks like we have about 14. Kind of round it up. If you look at that, the tenths place shows a seven, and that's five or more. So we tend to up the score to a whole number. So 20 plus 14, yeah, it's going to be 34. Okay. What we need to do here, it says step two. So we come over here, find the sum, add the hundreds first, then add the tenths, ones, and tens, regroup as necessary. And this is that equivalent decimal. So they've put in a zero in the hundreds place to show that it kind of helps keep our digits aligned. All right, makes sense. So here I have six, I do not need to regroup. Seven plus four, I do, because that's 11, okay? And I can't have a 10 or more in one place value, so I'm gonna carry that one over. Now I see a decimal point, bring it on down. That's right, when you see that decimal place, just think about that. Okay, now I have one that I regrouped, plus the three gives me four, and then I have two plus one equals three. So I have 34 and 16 hundredths. Is that pretty close to our estimate? Yeah, real close. So now I'm going to put 34 and 16 hundredths. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. That is so easy. All right, evaluate reasonableness. If your answer, is your answer reasonable? Explain. Oh, they want us to dig out the old mathematical practice one. Well, Yes, we can evaluate. Why is my answer reasonable? We just said it, really. We just kind of said that 34 and 1600 is really close to 34. So, yeah, we could definitely say, yes, my answer is reasonable. Yes, um, maybe comma, because it is, and when I say it is, I'm talking about the 34 and 1600. It is close to my estimate of 34. Woohoo! Now, share and show. Estimate, then find the sum. Okay, so I'm gonna look at two and a half. To me, it's about three. Four and six tenths, greater than five, up the score. That's about five. So three plus five, eight. All right, now I'll go ahead and solve. Ah, decimal, bring it on down. I should do that first thing. Five plus six is 11, carry the one. Four plus two is six, plus one is seven. Woohoo! 
yeah, yeah. This is so easy. Do it again. Here, I'm just looking at I can almost see a nine already because the seven is so great. Moves that up. Here, ooh, it's close. Really, really close. But we're going to leave it as a six because four or less, let it rest. So now we have an abrupt estimate of 15. Now let's go ahead and solve. Decimal point. Can I hear you guys say it? Bring it on down. Yes, and then I have eight. I have 11, carry the one. I have 14 plus one is 15. I have 15 and 18 hundredths. Is that close to my estimate? Yes, it is. We're doing really, really well. Let's keep it going. And by the way, any of these, stop the video, do them on your own, and then see how they're solved, okay? Now, I'm gonna say this is about two. I'm gonna say this is about eight. That means my estimate's gonna be about 10. I'm looking at them quickly because I know exactly what I need to do. I need to round to kind of the nearest whole number here because that's the largest place value of the number itself. Okay, so anyway, decimal, bring it on down. And then I have 12, carry the one, then I have nine. Okay, and then I have another nine. Looks like I have nine and 92 hundredths. That's so close to 10. Okay, let's come over to number four. Here, my estimate, now I'm just gonna look at it. It doesn't, I don't have to write anything down. That looks like about six. That looks like about four, six plus four. 10. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and solve. And I'm going to rewrite my problem. I'm going to line up those decimals. There we go. We are adding. So, and you know what? Let's throw in that zero, right? To help align our digits. Not required, but very helpful. Here's our four. Ooh, decimal. Bring it on down. Straight on down. Okay, and now I have 11. Carry the one. I have nine, and then I have 10. 10 and 14 hundredths. Yes, my friends, that is extremely close to 10. Now I come over to number five. Still alive. Okay, number five, it looks like we have, ooh, that looks like about six. That looks like about three. I could say an estimate of nine. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go ahead and write this out. Line up my decimals. Always, when I'm adding decimals, I need to line up those decimals. Look, he's got like a hole here. It's like a missing tooth. Okay, well, we'll fill that in right now. Here you go, zero. That's right, we can do that. Decimal point, bring it on down. We have three, we have 12, carry the one. That's seven and that's eight, eight and 23 hundredths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, dun, 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 dun. Whoo! Da, dun, 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 dun. Whoo! Okay, sorry. Mr. Wara, relax. Put the coffee on the other table. <laughs> anyway, what is this math talk? Mathematical practices. Explain why it is important to remember to line up the place values and each number when adding or subtracting decimals. Oh, what a great question. Oh my goodness, it's crucial. It's vital to the love of mathematics. My friends, when you put a digit in a different place value, you change who he really is. Mr. Wara, are you getting so emotional? I don't know. It's just, it's math, my guy. You know, it's math. And so, yes, it's going to change. If you don't light up those place values correctly, you know, I could add or subtract the wrong value in the numbers. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. That was an emotional moment for me. Okay. Let me get a tissue. Okay. I'm all right. Yes. That touched me deeply. Now. My friends, it is time to say goodbye. Time to say hasta la vista, my friends. Until we meet again on this path of mathematics. Now, live long and prosper.